This is part two of a video that we started to define four important terms, which were the subscripts that you see in these equations that decide whether it is aqueous, solid, liquid, or gas. And we did those in the first video. The three actual homework problems, we did one of those in the first videos, and we will now do the other two that were not done. So this was a word equation given to us. Actually, it was a description of a reaction. And we had to write the equation. Now, the hydrogen sulfide that they were talking about is this particular guy right here. And hydrogen sulfide is, in this case, being mixed. And because it's being mixed, I was assuming that we were going to have a, a, uh, an aqueous kind of a deal here. So what's going to happen is you will see aqueous here. And look at the aqueous you see right down here. And that means that it's going to form ions in the water. Now, iron 3 bromide. Iron is a 3 plus because that Roman numeral 3 indicates the charge on the iron. And bromide, we all know, is a 1 minus because it is in column 1 on the periodic chart. And the crisscross is how we got the subscript. So in the crisscross you see here, you got the 1 without the charge being the subscript for iron, and ones we don't write. That's why you don't see it there. And then we've got the 3 plus that you see up here, pointing down to the 3 down here. So that is our crisscross that makes the proper balancing of the charges for the iron 3 bromide. And you see this 3 times the 1 minus gives you three negatives to balance with the three positives that we got from the iron three, iron three bromide. So we are all set on this guy. And we're ready to look at the right side where we have iron two sulfide and the iron two main or the iron three sulfide, I'm sorry. Iron 3 sulfide means that iron has a 3 plus again. And we know that sulfate, sulfide is not a 1 minus, but a 2 minus. And so this 2 minus crisscrosses down to this 2. And the 3 plus for the iron comes down to the 3 for the sulfide subscripts. And now 3 times 2 minus is 6 minus, and 2 times 3 plus is going to be 6 plus, and that gave us a balanced molecule. You'll notice I did not write these as ions. They are a solid, so they get written as the molecule altogether, not as, as separate ions. And then we have our last one, this hydrobromic acid or hydrogen bromide, and this guy is going to be also aqueous in this solution. And so we have the aqueous, and this guy is going to be dissolved in the water. So this will be written as ions, this guy here, and we will also be writing ions for iron three bromide and for hydrogen sulfide, or hydrosulfuric acid. So now we have to look at this. Everything has to be balanced. So let's take care of the balancing, and then we can write our ionic and metionic equations. I look at hydrogen over here, and he has a subscript of 2. And I look at hydrogen over here, and there's just 1. So we need to put a coefficient out there of 2. And the 2 is written as a coefficient and not a subscript. And that gives us two hydrogens. Now we also have two bromides. Now let's get the bromide set. 
and the bromide is going to have to balance with uh, this bromide has to balance with this bromide okay and we've got a three here but there's two over here so we can kind of have to do the crisscross we're going to use this coefficient as the coefficient over here and so that gives us two uh, times three is six bromides well gosh we've got a bromine over here and there's two of them so we're going to use this subscript over here on the bromide to multiply whatever we had out here which was the two and that will change and become six so now we have six bromides and three times two is six bromides on the left. We have irons, interestingly enough, that balanced our irons because we, before we did that, we had two irons over here and only one here, but with this two out front, we have two irons. So our hydrogens and our bromides, here, let's point the hydrogen over here, hydrogen, is over here and is going to have to be changed, isn't it? So we've got to get uh, hydrogens because hydrogens are out of balance. We've got six hydrogens here and we've got to put a coefficient on here to get six hydrogens on the right. And we need a three. So we got 12 hydrogens. Three times two is 12. We got three sulfurs, three sulfurs, two irons, two irons, three times two bromides, which is six bromides, and we are all in balance and we are ready to do our balancing or our ionic equation. So to do the ionic equation, I've rewritten this with all the subscripts, and let's go ahead and break it into ions. So I'm going to put a spotlight on here and let us focus on the action that we're concerned with, and that is going to be right here. Okay, we've got the three hydrogen sulfide, H2S, three H2Ss, and because of the three here and the two, that means that we're going to have six, and I had this wrong. Let's get that fixed. And now we have the right number of hydrogens. And as we look here at the sulfur, the sulfur, and let's just do the point. I don't think that spotlight's going to work too well for us. Anyway, three sulfurs, and so we have three sulfurs down here, and that is written as an ion. Next, we're going to have the two irons, and so we're going to need a coefficient down here of two, and we're going to separate those guys out. So now we have a total of two irons. Oops, let's get a hold of this guy. Okay, we've got two irons with a three plus, and we have six bromides, but I didn't put the charge out there. Let's fix that. Okay, there's our charge. And so now you can see we had up here two irons and two irons. Up here we had two times three bromides, which gives us six bromides. And now we're ready to go over to the other side. The iron, iron um, three, the iron three sulfide that we have here is the solid, and that doesn't ionize, but we are gonna have to ionize this guy. So let's go ahead and pull him apart and make sure that we remember that we have the six up here and so we're going to have six hydrogens and six bromides. Here we go. And now you can see the six hydrogens 
and the six bromides. And now we are ready to do our net ionic equation, which is going to be put down here. This was the ionic equation here. And now we're going to do the net ionic. OK, to get the net ionic equation, essentially what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have this guy, the one that is the solid, and the things that make it up because everything else is going to be crossed out. So let's look at it. We've got six hydrogens on the left, and we have six hydrogens on the right. We're going to cross those guys out. we got six bromides on the right, and we have six bromides on the left, or six, uh, yeah, bromides on the left, right there. And what we have left is just the sulfurs and the irons. And you'll notice that the coefficients of the sulfur and the coefficient of the iron are what we have for the subscripts here. And that means that they'll be in balance. So we just go ahead and do our crossouts now. We've done the crossouts by crossouts. Now we'll just get rid of all those crossed out things and we'll be left with the net ionic equation. Now with everything superfluous gone, the net ionic equation is three sulfurs, two irons, and those come together to form one iron sulfide. Now, unlike the last one, you'll notice that I have these in reversed order simply because of the way they were in the ionic equation. If you like, you can reverse those because it won't matter. The important thing is that we have three sulfurs over here and two irons over here, and we're a done deal. Okay, this last equation is going to go pretty quickly. Basically, we had a balanced equation already written out with this with all the subscripts, and we are ready to rock and roll on making our ionic equation. So we'll start with the H3PO4, this guy right here, and we're going to take that down and break him up. So we're going to break him into his ions, and you see we have three because of this subscript here, which becomes a coefficient out on the ionic equation. Three hydrogen ions, which have a one plus, or one minus. Oh, they do have a one plus. Whoops, I got that wrong. Let's fix it. So now we have a one plus here, and we have the three minuses over here on the phosphate ion. And now let's focus on the rubidium hydroxide. Okay, there's going to be three of these rubidium ions and three of the hydroxide ions. Hydroxide goes from here to here, COH. And so let's go ahead and uncover those. We got three rubidiums, and that rubidium is one plus. And then we have three hydroxide, and that baby is a one minus. So now we have. Uh, taking care of the left side of the equation. As you can see here on the right side of the equation, we have our water, and there's three of them. And the L tells us it's one of those, the G, L, and S, those subscripts all would be written as one molecule. And then we go over and we look at our rubidium phosphate, this guy, and because he's aqueous, he's going to be written in ions as well. So we go down here and look at what that's going to become. And we can see, let's get this guy up out of the way. We can see that the rubidium with a subscript of 3 now has a coefficient of 3. And he is a 1 plus ion. And the phosphate here is written as phosphate without any coefficient because there's only one of these guys in the molecule and there's no coefficient. So we've got our ionic equation and we're ready to go on to the net ionic equation which is going to be essentially this guy here, the water with its coefficient and the hydroxide on the left along with the hydrogen on the left. And we are going to have us a water molecule and let's see how that works out. Coming down to the net ionic equation, we're going to get rid of all the guys 
that didn't matter. And so that means, so I've crossed out the guys that are the same on both sides, and now we're going to get rid of them. Now we're pretty, pretty much good to go, except you can see what's left. We've got a ratio of 3 to 3 to 3, and that ratio of 3 waters to 3 hydroxides to 3 hydrogens can be reduced. And so we can get rid of all of our coefficients because a coefficient of 1 is not required to be written. And this is what it becomes. And as you can see, what we have is hydrogen, one of them, hydroxide's one of them, and water's one of them. And we got two hydrogens here, one, two hydrogens on the other side, and oxygen, and one oxygen. And we're done. Hopefully this has helped, and see you all at school. Bye-bye.